development these days is changing on what can seem like a daily basis. There are so many new tools available and new ways to work, it can be overwhelming to try and keep track of all that stuff. If you follow popular blogs and tutorial sites, you've probably heard of stuff like Grunt, Yeoman, Bower, and other cryptic sounding tools that everyone is assuring you you've got to use. I'd just like to remind you that you don't actually have to use anything. The only thing you need to build a website is a web server and a text editor. The web remains, at a very fundamental level, an incredibly simple thing. And when you're feeling overwhelmed by the number of tools at your disposal, try to remember that. That said, today I'm going to show you a pretty cool tool called Browser Sync. Browser Sync can do a couple of things for you, but the most useful to my mind is just refreshing your browser whenever you change a file related to the page. Browser Sync uses some of those cryptic sounding tools I just mentioned, like Node.js and Grunt, though you don't have to use it with Grunt. But we're not going to go into that stuff. I'm just going to show you how to install and use Browser Sync in five minutes or less. Okay, the first thing we need to do is install Node.js. So I'll come over here to the, to the Node.js site and download the installer. I'm going to just double click and run it, wait for it to do its thing, and there you go. You will now have Node installed. All right, let's install Browser Sync. To do that, we'll open up a terminal window and run this command. npm install dash g browser sync. What does that mean? Well, npm stands for node package manager, which is a complicated way of saying app installer. So we tell npm we want to install browser sync and it handles all the details for us. Okay, that's installed. Let's start it up. To do that, we just need to switch to the folder that holds our project files. I'll type cd here for change directory and then drag this folder, which I'm gonna to use to showcase this, into the terminal window and hit return. Now I'm inside that folder. All I have to do is tell Browser Sync to start serving files. To do that, I'm just going to run this command, Browser Sync, start, dash dash server, dash dash files, and then I'm gonna have it just watch the CSS files. So that says, hey Browser Sync, do your server thing, watch the files in the folder CSS that end in the extension CSS, and then when I hit return, Browser Sync will start its built-in server and even helpfully launch the URL in my default web browser. Now I'm going to open one of these CSS files in my text editor and make a not so subtle change here. And you can see that Browser Sync picked up on that and immediately refreshed the browser in the background. So that's pretty sweet. Let's do some cross-browser testing. Let's open this page in Opera, Safari, and Chrome at the same time. Now watch what happens when I change the CSS again. You can see everything updated all at once. Now watch what happens when I click this link here in Chrome. Amazing, no? This is great for testing things like forms because anything I do with a form will be mirrored across all these browsers. And that is Browser Sync in a nutshell. And now I'm gonna show you real quick how I'm working in the browser these days. I'm a Vim user, and I'm about 10 times as productive with Vim as I am with the built-in Chrome Developer Tools Editor. So I use the DevTools Terminal add-on, which is an add-on for the Chrome Developer Tools that puts a terminal in your browser. Uh, on the back end, it uses Node.js as well, so I already have that installed. So to add it to the browser, I just run these two npm commands again to get everything installed. And once that's done, I can open up the Developer Tools here, and you can see so now I have a terminal running in my browser and I can fire up the terminal version of Vim and work right here in the browser and it's picking up my Vim configuration file, all my plugins and so on. There's no janky Vim emulation mode like Firefox offers. This is really Vim, my customized version running in the browser. And of course you could use Emacs or Nano or any other terminal editor you like. And this is also a terminal so I can run Git and other source code controls all without leaving the browser. If you're like me and, and spend most of your time in terminal-based tools, this is an incredible time saver. So that's Browser Sync and how it fits into my workflow. It uh, can do a number of other things. You can check out the documentation here, but this is the just under five minutes highlights reel. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me, scott at longhandpixels.net.